Okay, Tyler, we're talking about something Buffett has told us before. We've talked about this on another video we did, and that's not just blindly following the Berkshire Hathaway portfolio, maybe thinking directionally about opportunities in industries. Occidental Petroleum, of course, is the biggest oil and gas investment in the Berkshire portfolio. We've got three stocks we're going to bring to the table that we think are probably better alternatives than investing in Oxy right now. Yeah, I think we've talked about this before. Occidental Petroleum basically comes and goes with the price of oil. And I we've mentioned before, like, eh, if I was Buffett's position and I could get that lucrative financing deal that he did when the, when uh, when he did, sure, Occidental looks great. But buying it today? Oh, that's a whole different story. Oh, that's exactly right. And we're talking about deploying capital now. Is You, you never want to look too far backwards at what something another investor did and think you should do the same thing today because it doesn't always work out in your favor. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. Tyler Crow is with me. Before we get to our three stocks that we think are better than Oxy today, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, check out our special link. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. If you go to that link, you can get access to The Motley Fool's 10 best stocks to buy right now. Go check it out. Okay, Tyler, Occidental Petroleum, just the real short version here. Like you mentioned it, it, it became part of the Berkshire portfolio because they made a giant investment, Anad Anadarko Petroleum, just a huge bite for Oxy to take, and they needed more money to do it. And well, Uncle Warren has a lot of money, and having him in your corner is it's also a shot of confidence, but he also is able to get better prices when he does it. So they worked out a special financing deal that has been exceedingly good for Berkshire and also for Occidental Petroleum investors during this time of, of growth for Oxy and Berkshire's ownership. Let's move beyond it, though, and let's talk about what we think are some better stocks that you should buy. Let's talk about Marathon Petroleum first. Yeah, so this is one I brought to the table, and it's a company I've followed for a long time. It, the petroleum name kind of gives it away a little bit. This is not an oil and gas company in the traditional sense where they make it. They are a refiner transforming oil and gas to the products we actually need. And so instead of the ups and downs that you get with oil prices, it tends to be a much steadier business where you just basically, it's a, it's a value additive manufacturing business. I know it sounds weird to think of oil and gas like that, but it's very much the case. And I could go on a very long poetic reason as to why oil refining in the United States is a much better business than it was 10, 15 years ago today. But the bottom line is it's a much more consolidated industry and the operators are much, much better at operating their facilities and allocating capital. Marathon Petroleum has been one of the best in terms of that recently. Uh, after some very acquisitive deals that they made in the 2010s, they've been basically plowing money back into its shareholders. And I just want to give an example of it. In 2018, they made a very large acquisition. There's a West Coast refiner that they acquired. And since that acquisition, where they issued a lot of stock to do it, since that acquisition, they have reduced their share count by 53%. So in little less than five years, it's, they've, they've reduced their share count by 53%. On top of paying a dividend that has grown a better than 10% annually over that entire time. These are businesses that throw off immense amounts of cash, and there is not a lot of money that needs to go into growing the business because oil and gas demand in the United States is pretty consistent. So as long as you keep your facilities well-maintained and well-run, all you're going to do is gush cash and probably give it back to your shareholders. And that's exactly what Marathon's done and why I think it's such a splendid business, and it only trades for eight times earnings. Yeah, and you definitely get more stability with refiners than you do with oil and gas producers that ride their production. And also, as you've described it to me, and I think it's the perfect way to think about it, they're essentially leveraged bets on oil and gas prices. The good ones over time that can grow their production and grow earnings per share can, you know, the stock value can go up over the long term, but exceedingly volatile stocks because they tend to track with oil and gas prices, like you said. So I actually have a producer, if for somebody that's thinking about where oil prices are, that oil prices are maybe a little lower right now, and we've seen some of these ENPs, we've seen their stock prices come down. I have one that I think is probably right now, I think a better investment than Oxy. And that stock is Devon Energy. I'm going to show on the screen right now with Devon and with Oxy both. Both of them stocks are down about 18% so far from the highs earlier this spring. 
And I'm going to make the case for why I think Devin is the one that I would buy. I'm going to go back to their earnings presentation from Q2 at the beginning of August. And one of the things that we've seen a lot of these companies get better about doing is return profiles. Tyler talked about it with Marathon, where they've made shareholder returns a bigger priority over the past decade, really more than that. We've seen the ENPs over the past three or four years really make that same pivot, where instead of just drill baby drill and acquiring more land and deploying more rigs to, to drill more wells, they've really focused on having a, a smart plan to maintain production, maybe grow it a little bit, but take excess cash flow and return it back to shareholders. So one of the things they did as part of that is a fixed dividend that's they see it as being very maintainable across the oil and gas cycle. So even when oil prices dip, that fixed dividend is maintained, but they have a variable dividend that they grow the payout over time. As a result, you see this, where the dividend goes up a lot, comes back down. You have these little peaks and spikes where it goes up and down. And a lot of time that's going to be kind of riding the ups and downs of, guess what? Oil prices here. But again, that's the variable amount. As oil prices are higher, as they realize better margins, better selling prices, Free cash flow grows up. You know what they'll do? They pay a special dividend. They boost that uh, dividend each quarter, but they hold that base dividend really steady. So as a result, over the long term, it's created more value for shareholders. Now, the reason that I think Devon is really attractive right now is just its valuation. It's really important when you think about trying to take advantage of the volatility in oil and gas price. I'm going to show this since the beginning of 2022 just so you get rid of all of the weirdness from 2020, 2021, trading for about eight times trailing earnings. And that's a good bit cheaper than Oxy right now. It's Oxy's trading for closer to 13 times earnings. Excuse me, Oxy's trading for about 14 times earnings. So eight times earnings, if you're going to try to play that game, and that's a little bit of what you're doing when you're investing in these oil and gas producers, is you're thinking, well, right now, oil prices are a little bit lower. And I think oil prices are going to go up over the next a few years, I want to pay a lower multiple to position myself for as oil prices rise, as the cash flows go up for these companies, I get more of a return as their profits grow up, as the dividend that they pay grows up. So you look at the dividend yield and it looks like it's a 4% yield. But again, that's based on the higher dividends that they were paying on the variable part. So your fixed dividend is a little bit, a good bit lower. The point is, is that right now, if you're really thinking about benefiting from the reasons you would invest in Oxy, Devin's, I think, a better investment. Tyler, we have one more that we want to go in a, a different direction here from two specialists with Marathon and with Devin to uh, one of the super majors, one of the global giants that does a little bit of everything and does it really, really well. And that's Total Energies. Yeah, and it's interesting. We can play it off another Berkshire Hathaway portfolio company, and that's Chevron, because they're in the same sense. They're, they're more or less, a, a lot of people in this, they're considered the same. But if I were to be picky, there's a few things that I would say makes Total Energies a little bit better. A lot of people would point to things like it has a, a much more robust alternative energy business because it's looking to grow that substantially and had actually has done that relatively profitably compared to a lot of other generic oil companies trying to get into renewable energy. That's That's been a pretty spotty track record. But Total Energies has actually done a decent job of making... of investing in higher return portions of that business. So I'll give them some credit there. And also they've been going into a lot of other, I, I will call them very lucrative oil and, and gas exploration ideas that it seemed to be paying off quite well lately. Chevron right now is known almost exclusively for like its expansion in shale, especially in, in the Permian Basin. But Total has used its strengths in offshore in places like Angola, Namibia, and it has a lot of positions in Africa that look, right now that look incredibly promising. So it has the engines of oil and gas and alternatives and doing incredibly well. And from a valuation standpoint, it just looks better. And I, I want to use the term shareholder yield, and maybe not everyone's heard of that before, but it's basically like it add up share buyback yield, your dividend yield, and basically the amount of debt pay down that you get from a company. That's kind of your shareholder yield on a stock for a given year. Right now, Chevron has about a 9% shareholder yield, which is good. All things considered, that's your kind of return of cash to you as the investor. But if I were to compare that to Total Energies right now, they're looking at about a 15% shareholder yield with a much a higher dividend yield, a, much, a, a larger share buyback program, and paying down more debt than Chevron's doing right now. 
if I were to do a more traditional valuation sense, Total's trading for about 7.8 times earnings versus Chevron, which I believe is somewhere closer to 14. So I think you're getting a very quality business at a much cheaper price. I, I, some people will say, well, it's a European company, it pays higher taxes and whatnot. Sure, fine. But on a yield basis, Total Energies has just proven to be, in my opinion, a better investment lately. Yeah, I have it on the screen right now. So yeah, about seven point, uh, around 7.9 times earnings compared to 14 and a half times earnings, like you said. That, that difference in valuation to me more than makes up for any tax, corporate tax arbitrage you might be thinking about. And looking again beyond the shareholder, the total yield that you talked about, which I think is really important because especially factoring debt in there, they're, guess what? Debt holders stand in front of you in the line, shareholders. So the more you unlever the business to debt, the fewer shares that are out there, the more the business you directly own. That's great. But just thinking about how much are you getting paid? Almost a 4.7% yield from Total Energies. I agree. It's really attractive, maybe underappreciated by investors that are looking for stability. And us US-centric investors that look at the Chevrons and the Exxons and kind of work backwards from there. Looking overseas at Total Energies, I agree, is probably the better, safer, certainly more value-oriented way to invest in oil and gas right now. 